This is a little fixture that we use for the workshop. I'll just take the beam and slide it inside. And we're going to connect the standard 120 ohm strain gauge to channel 1. Very simple, the red wire will go to the P plus connection. The white wire, I'm going to use that for S minus. And then the black wire in this case will go to D120. Very simple, very easy. And then on the second strain gauge, on the advanced sensors gauge, we're going to connect it to channel 2. Red wire goes to the red post, or sorry, the uh, P plus connection. White wire goes to the S minus, and then the black one goes to D350. Just like that. And now, basically, we have to set the instrument up, and we'll do that by activating the channels. Let me grab the weight. We've got a four pound weight that we will use in order to apply load to it. So we have our four pound weight that we'll use to apply load to the end of this beam, but we also need the engineering data that comes with the strain gauges. We already know the resistances, we've verified that with the gauge installation tester, but we need to know the gauge factor for these. So the, the traditional CEA gauge is 2.120, and then the advanced sensors 250UW is gonna be 2.06. So I'll need to input that data into the P3 strain indicator. And just to show you how to do that <clears throat> and show you how to use this thing, first thing I'm going to do is activate the channels. And right now we have channels 1 and channel 2 active. The other two channels are inactive and I'm going to leave them that way. So I'll press menu to get back out. Second step is to set the bridge type. And these are going to be set up as a quarter bridge for both of them because they're both quarter bridges. I'll press menu to get back out of that. Third step is going to be to set the gauge factor. So for channel one, I'll just arrow down and arrow across. Gauge factor is 2.120. And I'll just press menu to get back out of that. And then I need to set the gauge factor for channel two. I'll come down, go over, and that's going to be 2.060. like that and menu to get back out. And now you can see that there's an indication if I touch the end of the beam and I load it, you can see that there's a response. But we need to zero this out because this indication right now really doesn't tell us anything. It's just an electrical offset. So now I'm going to press on the balance button and I'll press it again. And now we're zeroing these gauges out. So we're going to we're going to zero them out and we'll tell it to save it. And now they're both at zero. So now for the very first time, we're going to put a load on the end of this beam and see what response we get. It should be something close to about a thousand microstrain. That's what I'm expecting. We can go through the math to get a little more accurate, but really I'm trying to compare the two gauges and see if they produce the same response. To make sure that there's no additional moments, I'm trying to make sure we get the weight right in the center and see if we can get it to stop oscillating. Yeah, it's still bound. So we were expecting about a thousand microstrain and we get right at it. Uh, channel two is a thousand and two, thousand and three. And channel one is a thousand and nine. We've given it a few minutes to settle so that the weight would quit bouncing. And you can see that the gauges are essentially telling us the same thing. They're right at a thousand. One's a touch higher than the other. Um, when you start thinking about reasons why, one of the first things you look at is what's the tolerance at which you know the gauge factor. And in this case, the gauge factor is a half percent typically. So there's a lot of reasons why in, in the real world, in a practical sense, you know, we uh, oftentimes accept a 5% measurement, but 
when you can control a lot of your variables, you can expect a tighter tolerance comparing the theory versus the experimental. And in general, in these exercises, we find that we get within about 1% of the calculated value. So these two gauges are basically tracking and telling us, for all intents and purposes, for all practical reasons, really the same result. They're both very stable. Now that the weight has stopped oscillating, you'll notice the stability is excellent. And that's what we're looking for. When you're, when you're looking to determine how well your gauges are bonded, you want to look at stability under load. You also want to look at zero return. And you look at repeatability. If you put the weight on it three times, do you get the same result each time? So as we take the weight off, we get a count or two, and you could easily get that from the lead wire resistance. I'm going to balance that out one more time and we'll do it again. Let's try putting the weight on again. And it's going to be a little sensitive to where you position the weight as well. So if you get to one side or the other, Notice the repeatability is excellent. It's coming right back to the same spot. And if I take it off, we maybe have, we got one count that's probably the lead wire. I'll take and put it back on again. As you can see, the data keeps coming up to the same point, so the repeatability is excellent and the zero return is excellent.